And then there's one more thing we're thinking about. In fact, it's two. Um, <clears throat> but something we call variations. Uh, so today, for instance, when, if you've done a multilingual site, then the default way have been to create multiple uh, root nodes, one for each language, which sometimes makes sense because a new language is a new market. But sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you just want to do one-to-one -one translation. And people have come up with all sorts of uh, uh, creative ways to handle this, like uh, a new tab, which is a bad e editor experience, especially if you have 17 languages, then you have tabs in two rows. Kind of awkward. Um, it also needs some hacks on template level. Uh, then people have tried to translate on property uh, level, which doesn't work that well either. So let me just give you a demo of what variations could be like. Um, so this is ultra cutting edge stuff. Uh, but hey, default uh, starter site, very interesting uh, content. Then I have a Danish site, same content. Then I have a Spani uh, Spanish side, same content. Is it a bug? No. <laughs> um, let me just show you. What I've done here is I have a very difficult uh, login. But what I have here is I've assigned three host names to my root node. So I got oh, I have two uh, uh, host names and three, uh, three languages, so English, Danish, and, and US, but they're all pointing at the same node. Uh, no fancy uh, content underneath, just the same. But then the clever person will say, what is that globe in the top? And it is, my friend, a way to do a variation of a node. Also notice this new feature. For a while, it's been difficult to know that you could edit the title, but now as your mouse approaches the title, it fades up. It's using collision detection in JavaScript. It's awesome. Um, anyway, I want a Danish variation. So I, I click this button, and I say, yes, give me a Danish variation. And then I can say, uh, for instance, uh, let's look at the banner and saying, uh, this is Danish. It's very difficult to think about all these things at the same time. And here we can just say Danish, like this. And I publish this one. Then let's go to the Danish side again. And now we have our Danish side. So Umbrago automatically know how to match a culture with a variation of a site. And it even works on uh, children as well. You don't have to do anything. So why don't I uh, click this about one and create a variation of that as well. I'll do that. And I'll call this one. Danish, 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 Danish. Uh, so let's refresh outside here, and you can see now we got Danish, 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 Danish. So it works across children. It has fallback uh, methods to a uh, default variant. So we are actually going to be able to create uh, variants of notes, and they are just simple notes. Anything you can do with a note, you can do uh, within the uh, uh, the way variants works. Uh, potentially in the future. So that was one demo. Then there's another thing. <laughs> Segments. Ooh. <clears throat> so it's really cool that you can have multiple languages. But what if you wanted something else? Now, let's say, for instance, that I'm a, I own this site called Demo2. So nobody would look at the tree and thinking, what is this? Um, so let me just uh, see this site. And I like to sell products. That's my thing. Uh, but right now, we're also running a job campaign. We're running it on Monster, and we're spending a lot of money like this. And <laughs> when people then click the, uh, the link to our site, they see our products. That doesn't make sense. Segments. So let's just take a look. And this is a quite temporary UI. Uh, I have something called a referral provider here. So I could enable this one. And let's just see how it's configured. If you can see this, it's basically a way to say, 
use regular expressions and, and different kinds of uh, expressions to match referrers, then put people in a segment. Uh, so in this case, if you come from Monster, I'll put you in the job referral segment. Uh, and then I can also create a variant based of that. I can even persist the segment, which means that if people come back, they have an evil cookie, so we can recognize them again. Um, but let's just save this. And then let, let's go back to this page and see what we have up here. We have a job referral. And rather than products, I can say best colleagues ever because we don't spend that much on marketing. So now, if I click the Apply button, then what I see now is the colleagues. And in fact, um, uh, I could even have a cookie. So I read a little bit about this, and then I come back uh, two weeks later, <coughs> and I still get into the job uh, referral segment. In fact, when you persist, if you later then create members, then those segments automatically get associated with your member uh, account and then persist it permanently. So you can do really advanced segmentation uh, with, uh, with these tools. And so that was one demo. There's also another scenario. Let's say uh, that I have this awesome responsive site. And then when I browse this one on a mobile de uh, device, unfortunately, I haven't merged in the seven two things, and then my site might be responsive, my images might be responsive, but what happens when you just make it a, the same text responsive is that maybe this gets narrow, but it also gets really wide. So for instance, all my taglines are two lines, and I have a lot of content here, and I need to scroll on my device. So what a lot of people talk about right now is responsive content meaning that not only do you optimize the design of your site, the images of your site, but also the content based on the device visiting you. So let's try to see if we can use segments for that. Just go back to Umbra. Oops, I have so many demos. I'll just go back to my demo here. And here again, I have a new site. <coughs> and again, uh, I have my long taglines here. And maybe I wanted to uh, make them responsive as well. So we have another segment we created, which is called Browser With Provider. And again, you can create your own segment providers for this. And what I have here is, if you come with a device with a screen uh, narrow than 600 pixels, we'll put you in the small screen uh, segment. And again, we can persist it, and we say, yes, we want to create a variant based of this. So now I can go to my page. I can create a variant based on the small screen, which I already done. And you can see now it says welcome mobile, blah, 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 blah. Not a lot of text. So let's just uh, visit the site again now that we've enabled the provider. And now you can see we get the small text. Uh, and in fact, we also get some text here saying you have a small screen, as if you didn't know. And all these features are gone. The way that's possible is because there's also a template API for handling all this. So in our template, let's just zoom in. Oops, wrong one. Doo -doo -doo. This one. In our template, I say, if the current member has a segment of a small screen, well, then I'm just going to show that you have a small screen, and I'm not going to render the macros. So as I said, uh, with segments, we're introducing anonymous members, which means that you can query these, um, these visitors that haven't created an, an account on your site yet, but still um, treat them as uh, members and query for segments. So uh, we think this is pretty exciting, uh, the combination of segments and variations.